you. We'll call this meeting to order of Bellingham City Council for our special budget work session today. And I have no agenda or script here, so I think I'm just going to turn it over to staff. Oh, and we're all here, <laughs> running and rushing. I did too about 10 seconds before you. Okay. Might as well just get to it. I think this is good. Um, it's exciting to be able to actually present a true biennial budget to the council. Uh, our, our goal in the last two years was to have spending plans where our spending plans were balanced. So in uh, 13 and 14, that's what we did. In 15 and 16, um, I guess what I'd say, just to be right up front, is we got pretty close. Uh, in the, we have balanced the, um, the expenditures for the 15 budget, and out of the $142 million in just general fund, uh, we still need to uh, look for $650,000 over the course of the next two years to have a truly balanced biennial budget. So, uh, I'm just, can you repeat that number? Six hundred and fifty thousand okay. dollars out of a hundred and forty two million. So we got really close and that was through a lot of hard work um, by the departments and the staff in those departments to come up with efficiencies, um, other expenditures that could wait. That was one of our uh, cate categories, um, what can't wait. And then also uh, to understand that there is going to be some limitation on travel and that type of thing, um, conferences and travel, uh, unless there's a special circumstance where somebody needs that uh, conference or that certification to continue to do their job. And then we'll see how that goes after the first year. So um, I really appreciate it. We were scrambling at the very last week and everybody did their part and so I really appreciate that. So what I've done this year is to give you uh, basically two pieces of paper. The first one is the typical pie charts that you always see. Does everybody have this one? Mm -hmm. Jack, you missing something? Okay. Just wondering if we can put it up on. Oh, put it up on the screen. On the uh, overhead. Thanks, Marie. I think just a little bit lower. There you go. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Marie. And Brian, why don't you sit up next to me? You. Aren't you the finance director? I am. <laughs> Good morning. I didn't prepare this, though. No, you didn't, but you know the numbers if they have a question. Okay, so. We'll be um, nice, Brian. <laughs> so the, the, this is the budget by category. The revenues, general fund. This is just general fund. So this is the revenues and the expenditures. And this shouldn't be a surprise to you because basically it look, this percentage is basically what we look at every year. So on the revenues, um, the utility tax, the B&O tax, the sales tax, the property tax, those are the three big revenue generators for the city in general fund. And then on the expenditure side, um, the vast majority of our expenses have to do with public safety because those two programs, fire and police, are funded out of the general fund. Other programs are funded through some dedicated funds like parks and uh, like, well, basically it's like parks. So <laughs> basically like parks. Uh, so that gives you just a, a little bit of a breakdown in where the money comes from and where the money goes. And this, there's no surprises here except for the fact that over the course of the last, this year, our revenues are what we've projected, our expenses are higher. And so our revenues have been very flat and you, Brian has more information about the generation of the revenues, but 
um, we were disappointed, I think, that we didn't see our revenues go up higher. I'm glad we had a very conservative estimate last year so that the, the, uh, the balancing that we're facing um, is not as severe as it could have been. But we still need to look at our expenses. One of my goals was to maintain our service levels and employment. So with very few exceptions, um, we are maintaining our workforce. And I think that that's a good thing both for the citizens and the city. Um, does anybody have anything on the budget by category? Shane and then Jack. Real quick, Brian, has the public safety percentage been 58% the last couple of years? Or has it gone up? I remember when it was 55. I don't know how long ago that was. Yeah, it, it has gone up. It, it continues to be more and more of the general fund budget. And one of the reasons is because based on both what we see internally and what the community is asking for externally, um, we are now also, we hired two police officers last year, or we uh, appropriated to hire two, and we've done the same for this year. And that is based on our financial guidelines, su uh, summary and principles, which says public safety is our tier one responsibility. So we are responding to that need for the public. Jack? How, how would... How is the 42.5% of the sales tax on the revenue side treated on the expenditure pie chart um, for, for public works for street? Well, oh, oh. That, this is just general fund expenditure, so it's not going to show up on this one. But it's showing up on the revenue side, though, right? Because we're spending the sales tax money. Correct, but this is only general fund. So the portion of sales tax, both revenues and expenditures, is not included in this. Oh, okay, you're right. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. This is general fund only, yes. so all of that shows up in public works under street. Okay. The other, the remainder portion. And so the the any other questions on this the pie chart? And obviously, we can have more questions. Whenever actually, I'm, I'm still confused because right. it's you're trying to get an apples to apples on that because you're showing the revenue on the bottom of 141 million and the, and the expense on 142 million. It seems like we're collecting the sales tax in a general fund way, but we're spending it on an enterprise fund way. So no. Well, this is only the portion that goes into the general fund. So on these two graphs, it's only the revenues and the expenses that are general fund. So we, we receive the sales tax citywide, but we put part of the revenue into street directly and part of it into the general fund. And these graphs only include the revenue that goes to the general fund, the portion that goes to the general fund. So we actually receive a lot more than the 17 or the $24 Correct. million dollars in sales tax? Correct. Yeah, way more. Like quite a bit more? Yeah. Well, this is $24 million over two years, remember. So it's about Oh, it's 12, a two-year budget. Okay. Yeah, $12 million a year. Yeah. So you, you, everything's double. you got to remember, okay. everything's double this year. That's what the difference is. Thank you. <laughs> the good news and the bad news. Everything's doubled, and we still have a lot of expenses. So um, any other questions on this right now? And we can always come back. Doesn't look like it. Okay. The second thing I wanted to do was basically on this sheet um, highlight the major changes um, in the budget from the last budget. Uh, Marie, I'm sorry, could we ask you to put that one up too? <laughs> Kathy, you could ask her, but I did. She's on it. Pretty typical Marie. I barely have to ask her to do anything. She's always doing it before I think of it. While we're sitting here waiting for this to get, ooh, adjusted, you've got it in front of you. I'm, I apologize to the, to the public, but that is very difficult to read. We blow um, it up a half at a time? Yeah, zoom in. Ooh, yeah, now we're talking. Do you want to manage that? While we're sitting here, I also, since you were just talking about how efficient Marie was, I just want to say what a pleasure she is to work with, with our department, too. So yeah. you get a compliment, Marie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so the top is this a recap of 
uh, revenues, both general fund and all other funds, Jack. So you can see there that our general fund revenues are significantly um, smaller than our all of our funds. And then the total expenditures is almost $500 million. Does that make sense? Those are all our dedicated funds. Correct, Brian? Mm -hmm. Okay, and so we just uh, highlighted um, five departments to show uh, ma major changes. And the first one is the executive. And in the executive department, the big change is the elimination of one FTE, which was uh, Vanessa Blackburn's old community um, outreach coordinator position. And then also we put, uh, we uh, reassigned Tara Sundin to planning and community development as the new community, man community development manager. So those are the changes here. So um, I think that explains that. On uh, planning and community development, we've added uh, 2.7 FTEs. One of them is Tara. Are you listening to me in case I make a mistake? Okay. <laughs> Right on, I'm right on so right far. On. Okay. And um, uh, the other thing is uh, the other categories are due to the recommendations in working with the social service agencies um, that are the recommendations from the low income housing levy. In the police department, there's an addition of 4.5 FTE. Um, two uniformed officers, one lieutenant, and one neighborhood compliance, neighborhood compliance officer, and a .5 accounting tech. And then there's capital increases for CAD and 911 equipment and training. On human resources, uh, we have a restructuring that an all cob went out on uh, we are going to be dividing the responsibilities of the Human Resource Department as we go back towards an, a central administration uh, operations center as the city used to have. And so Camille um, will be the personnel manager and she'll reply, uh, uh, be supervised by Brian Heinrich and Alyssa who does the benefits and the payroll, the calculating parts of the job will report to Brian Henshaw. We've left a little cushion in that department, even though we're not hiring a, a new director, so that as we see where, the, um, where there are some gaps and where we need support because Lorna's body is not there anymore, we have some revenues there available to fill in those gaps. Also, we have nine contracts that are that we need to negotiate now. Mm -hmm. And we have one person really who takes care of that and that's Camille. So we will be looking for support as we negotiate. And my goal is to go towards interspace negotiations so that we can get our contracts settled sooner. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a, I'm, I have to admit that it's hard when you know you have that many hanging out there and then we have to pay retro pay which is very complicated to calculate and it's also then bigger, a bigger expense, even though we've saved some resources, it's a bigger expense when the contracts are settled. Um, the, let's see, what's the last one? Street fund. So on the street fund, last year when we funded the PDA and some social service grants out of money from the street fund, so basically what happened is we diverted money from this before it got to the street fund um, based on this, the council's decision and put it in the PDA and social service grants. Um, we are reallocating that $550,000 to the street fund from the PDA um, in order to come closer to meeting our street goals that we have for the city. Um, because we're gonna be doing bike paths, ped, uh, ped routes, um, the transit has also said that sidewalks and street paving are important for them as we look at our alternative mode shift. And so we want to make sure that there's enough money in that fund, which there isn't yet, but building forward that money so that we can take care of those obligations. 
and uh, we will be continuing to divert the other amount of money into the social service grants from the general fund. And I think the reason that that's important um, is the majority is going back in the street fund, but the social service um, support is needed if we're going to implement other things that I'm going to be talking about, like public health and safety, the downtown plan, what's happening on Samish Way and Maritime Heritage Park. Um, so does anyone have any questions about the big numbers? And then I'll go into a little more detail. Terry? Yeah, looking at the street fund, you're saying you're putting money back in, but we're looking at 14 million less. I'll let, I'll let, well, it was on my list to go into details. Okay. I can let Brian yeah. explain it. So I think this one uh, needs a little more explanation. So <clears throat> you notice that the first four departments are all general fund departments. So all of their expenditures and revenues are in the first column and then all other funds. And that's where the street fund is. In addition to this, um, there's been a, a reorganization in the street fund and we've, we've separated out the street fund into an enterprise fund of only street-related activities now. So this is, is a, a goal that uh, council has requested for the last couple of years. Um, also, the auditors um, suggested that we do it as a best practice. So we've undone the admin services, the engineering services, the management portion of it, and we're creating a new internal service fund. All of those um, responsibilities and costs will be in an internal service fund, and then they'll be built out to all city departments that use those. Most of them will be on the public work side, but they, they do provide engineering for um, other projects in the city too. So that is now a new creation of a separate fund, and that's why you see this reduction. Um, what you see is remaining here is only the street portion of um, the direct services. And there'll be more information on this when we do the detail of the street, but that's the main reason why it goes down. So that 14 million, does that appear somewhere mm -hmm. else up here? It does. It, it, it appears in an, a new fund that we'll be creating, an internal service fund for all of those things. And it, it, it pays for itself by billing out. So if you have an engineering and, and you do a project um, for facilities, it'll build the facilities fund to pay for that. So well, on this sheet, is it included it, in here somewhere? It's in, it's in that same column of total revenues and expenses for the city up, up in the top of 354 million. The change on the street side is a, is a reduction because all those revenues and expenses are in another fund. Right, I, I understand it's a reduction on this one, but does it appear in one of these others Yes. Columns up above. Yes. The, 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 the all total. other funds are, is everything but the general fund and the total. Okay, well, it's, it's a little confusing, but it was a recommendation of the state that's auditor. Right. That's why I'm yeah. asking it, it is very And it also, it also is, it may, will make it easier for you to see the difference between the administrative costs and the actual streets that we're paving. Correct. But there's not a reduction in dollars. Michael and then Jack. Uh, I sort of have a one and a half questions, Brian. Um, it sounds like the HR department may no longer exist as a department, but those costs will be shifted maybe into other departments. Sort of like the street fund here, kind of divided. Mm -hmm. Is that? And and then the question is kind of the opposite in both ways. Can you go back and construct a? a, a what would have been the administration engineering fund and what would have been just the street fund for 2013 14, just so we can see what the change would be? You'd have to kind of create an artificial fund as it would have been if it had existed. And then an HR, can you do sort of the opposite? So I'm trying to be able to map across the change. If you're organizing funds, I want to be able to compare across in time sequence by kind of creating artificial placeholder funds. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So, Again, this was just the high-level changes, and it's not meant to go into the detail, but yes. And, mm -hmm. and actually, when you have your, your budget, you'll see there's a, um, a new fund that's created that has all the public works, Terry, on it, and it'll show you all of the revenues and expenses in the new internal one, and we can combine it. The, the HR change is only a reporting function at this time. We are continuing to track all of the cost in HR as HR costs. We're not doing anything with that. It's a reporting 
um, structural change only on the reporting side, not on the accounting side. But there will be more explanation when we do street. It is a major change and it will take some time to go through it and it's scheduled in one of our um, future departmental discussions because it is. There, there is a lot of changes and we will go through all of those changes and we can add and subtract them for that very purpose. I'm looking forward to that street fund change because the name has been so misleading because it was, as you say, two funds mixed or two Correct. Tasks it, mixed together. Yeah, and, and I just want to point out, it, it wasn't that there was anything wrong with it. It just was not as clear and, and precise as it. And so now we're going to have a street fund that is only street, street maintenance, all the things that are related to it and everything else will be taken care of in another fund. Okay, Jack? Yeah, I just uh, actually just an add on to t for Terry's comment. Um, Ted told me on Friday that he was going to go into quite a bit of detail on on the street fund issues on at the department presentation, which is in a couple weeks, I think. Okay. Okay. So let me go through then just some of the more practical highlights of both what is new and what we are continuing to do. Because I think it's important to know just we sometimes just talk about the margins, you know, what's the difference. And we don't um, reemphasize the, the resources that we're putting into the programs that the public cares about. So um, the uh, public health and safety, of course, that is the two police officers and making sure that we have a dedicated presence downtown. Uh, for city center, it's the downtown, old town and waterfront. Um, we're going to be investing in the federal building, the parkade, Maritime Heritage Park, and waterfront cleanup. And those will all be into details as we go through those departments' budgets. For social services, we have spent a lot of time based on the relationships that we already had with social service agencies, based on the good work that they were already doing, and through the Community Solutions Work Group, tried to coordinate all of those things and see where the city needed to maybe step in in a different way just to make sure that everybody's pulling on the same boat and we're first of all for me recognizing as we deal with people that are unhoused as we deal with people with substance and um, substance abuse and mental illness that we are making sure that the, the safety net is there for them and we had a lot of exciting things that we actually found out about um, a hot team, which is a uh, outreach that we haven't had for haven't had a 24-hour kind of team like that. We we're also looking at the intensive case management through the Whatcom Alliance for Health uh, Health Care, and I always remember with A forget what the A stands for. It used to be Accents, but now it's anybody remember? Advancement. Advancement. Okay, it's advancement. Someone up there. Iris Sanders. Thank you, Iris. Um, and uh, the other thing that we're, you know, that we're looking at obviously is the mental health court. Uh, we're in a partnership with the county. We will be um, housing the mental health court and mini court. We will be um, staffing it with um, a, a court commissioner, and um, and there will be the city will or the county will be paying for it out of the mental health funds that the county generates. So I'm I'm thinking the statistics on this demonstrate that there is a, an, a really enormous savings if you're giving people the right support so that they can um, maintain their medications, find housing, those type of things that are case managed at the court level. So I'm I'm excited about that. And we also are doing a pilot program within the fire department's existing budget called Community uh, Paramedics, which is another way to reduce health care costs and also reduce costs at both the hospital and the jail. And we can go into more detail about that too. I think Bill Newbolt, the uh, chief, is very excited about this and would like to tell you about how that's going to work. Um, and as I said, the, uh, the total um, social service and human service grants that the city will be involved in distributing this year is the 345,000 in general fund, city general fund, but um, totaling $800,000 in state and local, uh, local and federal funds over the course of the biennium. So that's a good thing too. 
Um, we are reinvigorating the community development department downstairs. Um, we have had a need to have those community development services coordinated, project managed, and making sure that we're moving forward because um, there was not necessarily a focus on that aside from the grants that we are giving out. Um, Terrace and Dean will be the community uh, development department's manager. Um, they will be working on the community and economic development department as well as planning will be working on the quality future growth of the city. And that's I think the important thing is we're not just talking about growth, we're not just talking about infill, we're not just taking, talking about taking more people, we're talking about quality development, sustainable development for our city. So it still remains the kind of place that we want to live in. Um, neighborhood character is important and also developing where we have already made investments in infrastructure and parks so that we have ready-made places that have some opportunity to develop more affordable housing. The other thing that is going to be fo we're focusing on is to continue to improve and make more efficient our permitting system through the lien processes. We've finished two modules, we're into the third and there will be a fourth. And it's uh, basically ongoing quality improvement over and over and over, it just never stops. But the planning department has made a real effort to embrace the concept and to find ways to make the concept easier to apply and for people that want to do things in the city easier to do. And that includes the regular homeowner that just wants to build a house. So this is not focused on large developments. This is focused on any planning activity or any development activity that we're trying to, to do, including our retention ponds, I mean, a million things that the city has to give permits for. And I'm really proud of the department for taking this on. Uh, Lake Whatcom is always a big issue, and we are investing nearly $14 million in protecting Lake Whatcom. That includes watershed acquisition, water treatment, boat inspections, and other programs that we're doing for the lake. There, sh there certainly could be more investments with that, but I just wanted to highlight that um, the commitment to Lake Whatcom, um, we're, we still have that commitment to Lake Whatcom. Parks and Recreation, another uh, group that has dedicated funding, but we are investing $30 million of taxpayers' dollars in our parks um, and recreation programs over the next two years. So we are not skimping on our parks either. In public works, um, I mentioned that we restore or we rediverted the $550,000 to the Public Works Street Fund so we can continue to meet the issues that we have for paving, for sidewalks, and then it um, also affects our bike lanes and our ped paths. Um, and Brian explained, this was on my card to do now, but Brian explained about the separation of funds that we will go into more detail. And, um, and we will still be diverting those social service funds. And we will be working on implementing the bike plan and the pedestrian plan in the coming biennium. And finally, there is a financial system study that we need to do. So we will be um, purchasing uh, the consultant, um, we will be working with a consultant to um, make uh, recommendations on a new finance system. We've had the same core financial system for over 25 years. As you can imagine, there's some hiccups in the road. We want something that's more um, usable for everybody and something that is more um, integrated for all the departments so that there aren't all the separate things that departments have to do now so that we can give you the financial reports that we do. Um, the study will happen in 2015 and we may um, return in 2016 for some recommendations if we need to, well, we do need to purchase a new, um, a new system, but with that recommendation in 16. So um, I think that we've maintained the priorities that the public has been asking for. We tried to accommodate as many of the concerns that the council had raised early on. Um, as you look at the details of the budget, the things that you asked for in that early meeting um, are not all there, but there are a significant number that are there. 
and I look forward to having that discussion with you about the budget I'm proposing and the budget that you'd like to adopt. And I'll answer any questions if anybody has any. Michael. Um, so your last comment there, you said you asked for ideas, budget ideas earlier, and you said some of those are in there and some of those are not. Um, let me ask about one in particular that I, I brought up. You said we're, over the next two years, if the budget is adopted as is, uh, approximately $14 million towards Lake Whatcom. Is there any local money in there for the homeowner improvement program, which has been was formerly funded by state grant funding and that grant funding is now gone. Is there, is, is that program going to continue with local funding under your proposed budget? I believe it is, Brian. Yeah. I, head head nods from yeah. the audience. Yeah. John is yes. in the back. Great. Yeah. Thank you. I, I'd like to have a discussion about that homeowner program to make sure that we're getting the very, very best results we are for the investments that we're making because it's very important that homeowners take responsibility on their own property. So, yes, but the money's there for us to do it. Well, unless we're gonna require them to do it by regulatory means, I mean, it's a carrot and stick, and this is, this is the carrot part of it. I yeah, think. it'd be great to have another discussion about the, the, how we can get the, mo the most people involved for the carrot we have. I think what I've been hearing over the last two years on the um, <coughs> committee, uh, policy group joint, you know, place. <laughs> uh, I, I've never been able to remember that name. Um, is that this was kind of home, the homeowner improvement program uh, pilot in a sense and we were learning a lot and now we're ready to reevaluate, think about how to launch a maybe 2.0 version of it that's improved and, and can reach even more people. I think that was a better description than I gave. Thank okay. you. When you uh, mentioned the intensive case management program through WAHA, uh, uh, it was my understanding when they originally came to talk with you and county executive, it was looking like the county and city were going to maybe work together to help fund the initial parts of this. And it's my understanding the county's kind of not doing that, at least that's what looked like at our EMS meeting because they pulled out of that part of it. Will you be continuing to talk with the county exec to, uh, about them also? Is, I'm not sure how much we've got in the budget, but as, I, as we've talked, I'm proposing putting in right. well, money we're, to cover right. we're, the, we, such an important program. Right, we're, it's a very important program. Mm -hmm. And we are still looking at our, op, our obligation. Yes, I will continue to talk to the county about what we can do. The good news is that the group also revised what they were asking for. So they phased in what they wanted. So I think that we can invest mm -hmm. for the city's investment, invest less money and get the critical pieces put in place. So right. um, we're not necessarily hiding an, an executive director position and things like that. We're actually looking at the services that we need to help the people that are out there. Yeah, that's my conversations with them, that's going to be the proposal to mm -hmm. get the initial case managers out there and working. Yes. Uh, anyone else? Okay, Michael, again. Uh, this actually has to do with our quarterly financial report and revenue projections. When will, when will, when in this budget process will we be getting the revenue projection part of the discussion? October 27th is the both going to be the third quarter um, financial report and the public hearing on the revenue forecast for the next two years. Roxanne. Well, I just wanted to say that, you know, when I was running for office, I was telling the community this budget process was going to be one of the more interesting things that we would look at because I know people feel like our economy is really starting to come back, and boy, we sure are all grateful for that. But, you know, we're not out of the woods yet, and so we're going to continue to be asked to do more while we're still with less. And so I just really wanted to thank all of the departments, the mayor, for pulling this together in a time where we're still trying to work through the economy. And just to end with a joke, you know, I wonder how much money we could raise if we did a city council car wash. <laughs> Let's see, we might be able to pay Probably for... <laughs> <laughs> well, the, or, or a big sale. 
the, thank you very much, Roxanne. The, the, the core message is the budget is the budget, but the most important thing is the work plan for the city, which is why I tried to highlight what we're trying to accomplish in the next two years. Because when we decide what we want to accomplish and we try to fit that in the amount of re resources that we have or we decide how we can get more resources, uh, then it's a living document. Then it's not just lines on a paper. It's basically investing in our community to get things done that are priorities. And that's how I view the budget. In fact, I think you know, my job is community development. Um, and community development means every single thing we do in this city that adds to our quality of life, our public health and safety, our, our roads and transportation, um, our housing and affordability, and what kind of jobs we have for people to have. So, so community development to me is um, like what your community looks like now, and the vision you have for what your community can look like in the future. So I'm, I'm thrilled that we were able to maintain as much as we could. I know that there will be changes that the council may like to make and certainly we're open to that. I've already talked to Michael about a potential um, amendment to the budget. Uh, so Brian gets nervous when I say that. <laughs> it's a small one. It's a small one. <laughs> Because I think it's important that you feel like this is your budget too. And what I try to do is I try to start with the history and the priorities that you have set out and not deviate from that any more than is necessary to meet the circumstances of the time. So thank you for starting with such a strong base. That makes my job easier. Gene and then Michael. Is uh, Clean and Green funded the next two years? I think it's self-supporting, it's not. I know we'll get into that, but I, it, we subsid, no, no, we, no, it is self-supporting. Self <laughs> yeah. I know, we'll, I just wanted to bring it up because I get nagged about that Thank a lot. Thank you, Gene. So. Yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> Eric will answer that question. Okay. Thanks, Eric. Well, Eric Johnson, Public Works. I have an answer whether I answer that question or not. <laughs> um, uh, the pro, the pro, excuse me. The proposed budget for 2015, 2016 does include the Clean Green Program. It does uh, uh, currently lose around $150,000 a year, which we're at with the increased fee. That there is a drop in the number of users coming to Clean Green this year. Uh, even at the $10 fee, we're still losing around $150,000 per, per year in that program. Uh, but it currently is listed in the solid waste fund budget for the 2015-2016 cycle. In order to fund that program, we're having to use reserves out of the mm -hmm. solid waste fund to keep that program in existence. Using the, the policies that the council has set forward for other uses of the solid waste funds to keep that clean green program in existence does require the use of some reserves. What's the percentage down again this year? Can you know, do you know? In terms of number of users, yeah. we're about 25% drop from last year. Well, we have more some more specific detailed information on that coming okay. to the council on the 27th, I believe. Uh, very specific detailed presentation related to clean green. Uh, it is included in the proposed budget, but there are some uh, decisions to be made by the One council. last thing, commuter trip reduction, is that $25,000 still in the budget? Yes, that one and is in the budget. And the county doesn't fund that anymore? Um, I cannot answer that off the top of my head. I don't think they do. But, but we're continuing with our 25000 So What the, was that, Gene? Commute the commuter trip, trip reduction okay, yeah. program. Right. Because I know some companies are yeah. going away from that. And I just wonder, you know, we're, we're in it. So if we put in 25000 the WTA puts in money. That, are those the only two entities that put money into it anymore? Or is Well, we'll that, yeah. Anyway. We'll, we'll, we'll have, have to get to that. Get that. Yeah, well, that's fine. I can't tell you who else runs okay. it. Yeah. Michael? Um, this shows what I'm going to call our steady sources of revenue, the, the tax revenue that comes in. Uh, one of the big things that we've done in the past and still do is um, bonding and financing, and that often relates mostly to our capital budget. Um, capital budget, I think, is going to come at the <laughs> end of the discussion this year. Um, can you give me a little preview? Is there going to be significant discussion of our um, bonding and debt capacity issues at that time, or is it going to be pretty much a status quo picture when we get to that discussion? It, we'll, we'll have a discussion. Maybe Brian wants to add to that. Um, we can certainly um, include some more discussions on bonding. It will come up 
under uh, other information and conversation. So as he was talking about clean green, we need to look at solid waste. So right now we have begun refunding the 2005 bonds from the solid waste. Um, so that's one savings that we're anticipating. Um, we're working on that over the next couple months and that'll be coming to council. So there's a number of, of times that it'll come up, but if you'd like specifically about debt capacity and bonding, we can. The, the anticipated bonding currently right now is only in 2016 and it's in public works. Um, so I can tell you that. But we do need to always be consider how we're going to pay for the remediation and the solid waste fund is an integral part of how we pay right. for a remediation. The difficulty is, is the permit process, the investigation process, and when those construction projects are gonna really begin and that continues to be postponed and so I'm just trying to remain flexible but we can give you more um, options that we've looked at and also potential timing but um, currently there isn't a scheduled begin on those until we have all those other things taken care of so. And that's what we've been able to do as we have raised the, the fees on Clean Green is be able to actually start setting aside money for our, reme our environmental re remediation, which we, we don't have a choice about doing. We have to do it. So um, that's why I'm looking forward to the Clean Green discussion too, because it's a bigger discussion than, than, than we've, what we've had so far. Well, it's sounding like rather than a discussion, a, a general uh, city debt discussion may be just a more focused discussion when we come to that one particular issue having to do with our environmental liabilities and funding. Mm -hmm. We'd be happy to do that. It's a, it, it's very large, our unfunded liability. How much more will we be putting in the fund this year? Or are we leaving it? <coughs> 600? For which one? The environmental cleanup fund. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> we are transferring money from solid waste into the remediation fund. Um, it's $400,000, um, but it, the, the real discussion is, is on what um, Eric was talking about is, is that subsidy, the city subsidy to Clean Green, is that the highest and best use of the solid fund um, revenue at this point? Because maybe it should be converted over to remediation. They have a number of alternatives that they've been looking at that might not eliminate the service, but maybe not have us provide that service. So without giving away their <laughs> show, um, I think that it will be part of the conversation, but that's, that's really where it needs to go because we do not have enough money in the solid waste fund to pay for the debt service on the remediation as soon as we begin that. So um, at one time we are considering prepaying those bonds, the 2005 bonds. My plan now is to not prepay that, but to refund them. Um, because rates are low and then to use that money, as Eric said, as a reserve to pay for ongoing studies and also the clean green until a decision is made on that. But all of that is a, is a longer term conversation that needs to happen. Michael. Please remind me, what is the main source of um, money to the solid waste fund? I believe it's a solid waste fund tax and if it is, if I'm correct, is there any discussion or any the accommodation made in these budget numbers for the fact we'll be renegotiating our contract, our waste service contract in the city. You are correct. It's the it's a utility tax on sanitary service, um, and that is the only s revenue other than the clean green and what the county used to contribute to it. Um, and as those have diminished, then um, the revenues are diminishing along with that. And I don't think other than the increase in the clean green fee that there's any anticipation of changing um, that in the current revenue forecast. So that would be part of those conversations if, if you wanted to change that or look at the revenue sources. But that's not built into the numbers currently, I believe. Kind of a little bit off topic. I, I know that earlier in the year we asked for some policy discussion on that waste service contract to occur in this year because that contract this year maybe I'm not sure soon maybe next year I think you because wanted to have contract it before is, any contract yeah the contract 20 ends in new in 2016 so I think we wanted to have that discussion in 2015 it's just this is a biennial budget I'm looking ahead right. of that one waste part, stream and our remediation needs the part part of that discussion will be on the 27th I will say it, it, biennial budget we we are 
conservative, we're not going to anticipate revenues in the biennial budget, especially the, the second year, for an anticipated change or a contract negotiation. <laughs> if and when that happens, we would adjust the budget. So um, we're, we take a forecast of the revenues and we look at what is organic or what we can anticipate from growth, not a change legislative, because those are very hard to predict and, and so they're not going to be in here for contracts. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Well, we've already presented the draft schedule. I think we've adopted that. And so there is a schedule by which we're going to talk about all these things in general. If you have questions already that you want, some of them you've mentioned today, um, please get them to Brian Heinrich for me and Brian Henshaw. Is that schedule in our inboxes? And I just haven't checked it yet. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so just to recap, we're meeting pretty much weekly on the budget starting today. Uh, on council meeting days, we'll meet uh, on the budget following our committee meetings in the afternoon whenever they end. And on the off Mondays where we don't meet in a regular meeting, we'll meet at this time from 11 to 1. And it's going to be fun. Hmm. Well, it's... It is fun. It's important it and you get to dive into some well, of the right. nitty gritty that we don't mm -hmm. have time for a lot. Because I think challenges are fun. I think it's going to be fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Roxanne and then Terry. Well, just speaking of the fun, you know, I really hope.